Sheffield Astronomical Society has changed in recent years. The new society aims to promote astronomy and science education to a broad range of age groups, as well as act as a meeting place for those with a keen interest in the science. Founded in 1934 by Sheffield University lecturer Reginald Cox, the Society held regular meetings at the University and at Western Park Museum. Led by Mr Cox, the Society initially concentrated on the more academic aspects of astronomy. Then, in the 1950s, construction began on an observatory at Norton, on the southern outskirts of Sheffield. The observatory housed a 12.5 inch telescope and was used for 40 years until encroaching trees and light pollution forced its closure and finally its demolition. In 1999, the Society moved to its present location in the Mayfield Valley, a dark sky site on the southwest side of the city. Since then, the Society has held many public events and has given talks to many community and school groups across the region. The largest of these events took place in June 2004, when the Society staged a public event in Sheffield City Centre to watch the rare passage of Venus across the face of the Sun. most memorable moment so far has been the Venus transit, because it took so long to get... We knew what was happening from years before. We knew what was going to happen. The planning of the whole event then the success in getting the funding to make it bigger and better than what we even envisaged. And then the numbers that came through through the tent, through the marquee, and the numbers that were on the internet made it absolutely incredible. The event was attended by over 5,000 people. The Society holds a variety of regular meetings and events. Two evening meetings are held each month at the Mayfield Centre. At the first, a guest speaker presents a lecture on an astronomical topic. I like the speakers' evenings because there's some, always somebody interesting on who always... You learn something, even if it's something that you think is going to be far too complicated, there's always something you come away with. At the second, members of the Society present several shorter lectures, usually linked to a central astronomical theme. It may well be the beginner's evening. There's a, something for everybody at those events, a whole variety of different topics taking place during one particular session. During the summer, the Society holds afternoon events called Sol Days. Of course, you must never look at the sun with the naked eye or through any kind of binoculars or telescope because it would lead to permanent blindness. A solar scope, this is. Ah. And you point this end over here at the sun. Right. And it concentrates the light through a small telescope onto a little reflector in the back here. These give the public an opportunity to safely look at our sun through a specially adapted telescope. The sun with some sunspots. Good Lord! Yes. They see that our nearest star is a far more active and dynamic place than they might imagine. Uh, I like Sol Days because I can actually bring my daughter, she's too, uh, too young to come uh, on the evening, so I would say the Sol Days. OK, so now you're looking through the, uh, the solar scope and uh, you can see that the, the colour is a bit orangey, isn't it? Sort of, yeah. uh, you've got a, a nice circle with some um, orange colours coming from it and you can probably see a few sunspots. Can you see there's a few sunspots yeah. on there? You get to look at the, uh, the sun through a special uh, telescope and... Uh, and see the atmosphere around the sun, which you just wouldn't be able to do that anywhere else. When one of the prominences bursts off, it becomes a flare. Can you see any of those little things there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're looking at the moon at the moment, we're just going to type in the coordinates for... In the winter, the Society holds evening events called Space Fests. Off it goes! Can you see the moon? These are outdoor public observation sessions where the public can use the Society's professional telescopes to explore the moon, planets, star clusters, galaxies and other interesting objects and activity in the night sky. You have the time to use the telescopes, it's a real sort of real, really great opportunity to come along and, and use the facilities. Seeing something uh, for yourself as 
um, through a telescope is a lot more than just looking at pictures. Outreach plays an important part of the society's work. Society volunteers present talks to a wide range of audiences, including schools and community groups. They also bring telescopes to give groups the opportunity to see interesting objects in the night sky. Each talk is tailored to its audience, whether it's a scout group or a local town's women's guild. Probably the Astro Days, because you get to stay there for a lot longer and you get to do a lot more things. The Society is featured regularly on local radio and in the press. It's no pie in the sky scheme either, as it has the backing of Sir Patrick Moore and TV presenter Adam Hart Davis. We really want to grasp people's interest. The proposed building would not compromise the openness of the Green Belt and is designed to sit comfortably within the much valued valley. The Mayfield Valley is an ideal location for viewing the night sky because of its minimal light pollution. It will be a unique development and we have no doubt about the potential. The Astronomical Centre is an excellent way of promoting interest in space science which is really coming of age. <laughs>